Now, tell me about on the food. roof, uh -huh. in addition to the two air conditioning, the one back here, we've already pointed out where there's potential for the seal under it causes it to leak. But because of the Freon, we don't know whether or not you can lift it enough. I tried to, to talk around it. it. Okay. This dog house yeah. uh, is for the, the vent in your bathroom. So you can open uh, it when it's And it's, it's a powered vent, and you can still use it. Charles Next to it, that. trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Next to it, uh, the dome there frequently has to be recalked. Okay. On the opposite side, around the, where the fantastic vent is, and several other places, you'll see places that have to be caulked. But especially here at the front, at the transition between the fiberglass pieces, mm -hmm. and you're already aware of the problem on the slide out. Right. Now, as far as on that roof, you can, bef uh, from the dirt, you can usually see where the studs, the rafters are to step. Okay. Uh, it's aluminum rafters, uh, but they're not on an equal spacing. Uh, the, the rubber ducky antenna, uh, there is an out that comes down there's nothing plugged into it. Uh, the antenna on the side of the coach is your antenna for your radio. Okay. The, if it hasn't frozen up, if you lubricate the uh, spotlight, extremely helpful in parking it at night. You've got a controllable spotlight. Okay, the, you will need to extend the vents back here on the, or else you will get toilet gases you have a plastic extension don't you i think it's gone but it's just a piece of inch and a half I standard see. so the one up on the top of that and then extension. put yeah and either put a power head on it or put one that rotates with the wind that's, that's got a vortex to get it to draw uh, you occasionally get a little whiff of odor during the summer if, if you're not if that's not there So it needs to be up higher than it normally is and we just used a coupling so you can set it in and take it off Speaking of height, what is my height so I can go on? We will thing? need to measure. Okay. It's been too long. Right. I want to say 13.8, but I'm not sure of that It's been just been too long now uh, as far as the rear of the coach, and then we'll go up to the driver's seat. Okay, hang on. Uh, we'll revisit it, but this bumper mechanism, the bunker, you have a release mechanism, and this whole thing just comes out, and it's For the spare. spare tire. Okay, show us where the lever is. Yeah, we're going to go by bay, by bay. It's one of the little things. The lever for that is that chrome lever under the water bottle that's the release for the for, bumper yeah okay so we'll come back to this yeah we'll come back to it you can just leave it up it won't hurt anything mm -hmm. we're in good weather all right let's go inside and start at the well we've got the door open here so we can see some of this the peculiarities you need okay to pay attention to it. the retainer strap here is 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 broken needs to be replaced okay we've cake. already talked about the parking brake and parking brake release that yeah. it will not totally cancel the light the hood release here you still have a mechanism it'll need to be lubricated we found the bracket and we put it in here well here it is okay here's the bracket so for, just nothing to connect it to uh we i show you where it goes in just a minute there you are. I was wondering okay, you, man. the hydro the leveling jacks we've already talked about are here. With the engine running, turn it on, it'll light up. These come over to extend, uh, to retract. You put them back. The ones that have that the springs are rusted off on will not retract. So you got that wired up already. They're, yeah, there are two for the front and two for the back. Two, yeah. Where and they'll the each be, lift about 9,000 pounds. Okay. There they are. Okay. They will literally pick the coach up. Okay, good. Yeah, you don't really want to, but you want to definitely balance it. Uh, 
now you've already this, this you've already seen found all the controls on the seat i'm sure uh, now the seat runs off of the auxiliary battery doesn't it or does sorry, it? Sorry, I think it does. I think it does. And the slide runs off the auxiliary battery. Yes. And the steps run off the, the auxiliary battery. I've got two breakers and a switch here. I have no idea what they do. Okay, where are those? Right here. The toggle switch not doing and anything. the breaker, that black button breaker. Now beside it is the battery and coach disconnect to protect your batteries when it's in storage. You depress those two, both rocker slip. Getting the sequence right to get everything turned back on can be interesting. But so now there are duplicates repeated, yes, there's by a the door. Above the door. Frequently, this one will not get enough voltage to work correctly, and you have to use the one above the door. Now, as far as the instrument panel, it's pretty obvious it's all labeled. Uh, Let me go here on the... Yeah. Okay, the air conditioning does not work, but the, sometimes the fan will come on, sometimes it won't. Okay. Here is your air horn. It doesn't work. Here is, this says flasher, but actually the flasher right is there. right here on the column. I don't remember what this is. What horn does work? A sta the standard one on the on the side of the engine. Uh, okay, across here, this th this is the air horn, which is not doesn't have an air horn. Okay. And this is not the correct one for the flasher. Okay, the battery boost it will it can drain from both batteries if you depress that while you're cranking. Okay, so if you've got not enough if, in one and you need the second, except that the stronger is going to want to levelize the. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the mirror and the frost, eh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, the wiring's still there. The fog lights were working the last time I checked. The dock lights are, when you're coming in at night, were working. And which ones are those? The ones around the top? By your shin right here. Okay. Okay, uh, where's the key? It was under that bag right there. Let's let me turn it just to the accessory position and see if if those dock lights come on. Yes. This side of the us right here. Oh. Those are excellent helps. Excellent, yeah. Those they are so they're right here, I'm on the other side yep. as well. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. Let's check the fog lights. <laughs> I've never had the mirror frost, so I assume that they work. Here are the push out breakers, spotlight step, monitor, mirror, fan, power windows. That's a powered window there. The cigarette lighter, the backup, clearance, the fog, the horn, and the dock. The left mirror control is here. Mm -hmm. It apparently works up, down, in, and out. Uh, on this side, the right mirror will not rotate out, but it will do up and down, okay. and, and well, you'll find out. It's either in or out. I forgot which I one. If, we, if I put it out, okay. it won't come back in. Here is your remote control for starting the generator. Okay. Or stopping the generator. I have found it effective for stopping the generator, so but has sorry. never worked well for starting the generator. Okay. This is your control panel for your for your light. Spotlight. Before before the spotlight is lubricated, I wouldn't risk burning the motors out. Okay. This is your defrost fan. Okay. Uh, High and low switch for that defrost fan. The floodlight and spotlight toggle switch. Uh, did it come? Did it come on? The floodlights or the spotlight? It's the same unit. Oh, okay. It's got two. It's two beam. Yeah, it's on. Still on. Okay. That's a rocker switch. 
what are I forgot what cur the courtesy lights this is the switch for them it's got a series through the coach and they may or may not work uh, here at, at foot level what the top light is it off now Let's see if we can get the backup light to come on. I said yes twice because there's two of them. Okay. This is a normal instrument panel. On the right hand gauges, you do have your vacuum meter down here, and it runs almost to the red range uh, at times on the vacuum it'll you know how that works the LP gas thing is useless okay the sensor on it's never worked they never do uh, that's notorious in the industry and this is your tachometer this thing if you keep it around 2000 rpms is uh, the most efficient on the engine and of course this is on again, off again, working. It was working pretty well, but uh, the video camera. Hadn't seen that little dot in a while, have you? <laughs> uh, I don't, there we go. Yeah. It's rather flat image and not terribly, uh, this thing's on the ground, you can't tell what's what. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've already shown you the radio, the, yep, that uh, works. this actually comes off, but uh, here's your C SD card or here's your uh, CD, CD player. player. Uh, it's got a nice little radio head. These do work uh, sort of, kind of, on the heater. The heater box is not replaceable. I will show you under, under the engine cowl how you get the heater to come on. You can control the amount of hot water, but you cannot turn it off and on from in here from these controls. Okay. The cigarette lighter was working, and I put a fan here to keep the driver from burning up. We've already been in the doghouse. Yep. Uh, her seat will swivel. Actually, yep. both seats will swivel. Uh, the original manual is in the pocket. We've already talked about, you see my screw mm -hmm. here to, for... for uh, and I, the, I've never had this pop open on me. They're spring loaded, but I was always careful when I put above my head. Uh, you've got cabinets around here. You've got a flat cabinet up there. It's got a bunch of electronics. We'll go over in just a moment. Here's your, here's your interior courtesy light. Where's the interior courtesy light? Behind yeah, all behind. of this. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I sort of did. If you didn't know, it was there. The curtains yeah, retract that. to the yeah. side, you know. Let me get the books. Uh, I found an old-fashioned uh, clothespin was the most effective closure for it. Uh, she does have a movable side window. I would check it for leaks. That, the gaskets on it have probably <laughs> rotted. Uh, this motorized uh, door window still works. And I don't know whether that light down there comes on in the door or not. I think the I don't think there's a light in the door anymore. Okay. At the bottom. I'm just tickled. There's a. There door. is not. That's one of the big features. Okay. As far as <laughs> keys. 1994. Obviously, you know where the ignition key is. The purple key is your key for the driver door. Okay. 
the we've already found out that the side door back here will flop open if it is not latched with the deadbolt. The remaining keys, the uh, quick set key or that design key is obviously the door. The orange key is your under bays. Okay. I have no idea the what your green key is looks, for. It looks like a master lock key almost. Yeah, it may be for one of the locks. Uh, okay. That's it for here. Let's unlock the side. Let's come in the side door and walk through the coach. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Very important to remember. And if you can get down low enough. Here is, here is the inflation control. Accidentally, it can get the, the can get. Inflation control for lost. what? This is your tag axle. Inflators. Okay. And okay, it where should switch as well as down is inflate, up is exhaust. It's marked, but you have to be down at this level to read it. Yeah. Where should it be when you're driving? Inflated. Inflated. Okay. I have never encountered a situation where it didn't work. Now here's one of those hidden fuses that I didn't even know. I don't know what it's for. Hmm. Here is another. I think there's a fuse panel behind here. There's another fuse panel up front, but... It's marked on the cover as to what it is. You'd have to pull it off okay, and you'd have to pull it out to, to be able to, to see, see it, it, to read it. Yep. And you have to depress the... You have to depress the tabs to get it off. Yeah. So we'll leave it alone. And I don't want to tear up my hand, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> okay, what's Maybe next? we're moving around. Okay, this is the heart of the system. Uh, the battery uh, coordinator. There's a solenoid up under the front, but these are rocker switches off and on. You heard it click off. Uh -huh. I don't have my glasses on. I think that says coach. Yeah, and the other one says chassis. Okay, there's your voltage. There's your voltage rocker the other way. They should both be on after it's reconnected, after you get the fuse, here is your controller for the uh, slide out. Now, see the bar on the end of the slide out? Mm -hmm. That has to be down, but also it is very, I have gotten, I've messed that up a couple of times. Where's the bar? Right here. The seat being in the way. I got you. So that's okay. why you labeled that. So the bar has to be down. Yes. And if it's not... The motor, like that? Yep. But this locks it up. Yep. the bar from coming down while you're driving down the road? Never has. The, if you're driving down the road, the, it probably will. It has been in the way a time or two, and you it gets everything out of alignment because the motor will keep on ginning. This was working uh we got to figure out how to get this power back on this is your water pump uh and then the condition of these different tanks are here you can't really depend on the battery one but the fresh and gray water and black water tanks uh, is fairly accurate the lp gas forget it it's, it never has worked and they don't but we need to get some light on the subject, guys. Here's one of your 12 volt lights that oh didn't have a bulb in it. Well, that would explain that one. Okay, let's 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 try to get this. These the lights. The guy that wired this could not rob 12 volt for the air conditioner. It okay. needed an additional wire, so he robbed it off the circuit. So on this panel beside the door, the interior lights have to remain on at all times but you have to switch these two lights manually on their ends. And that one apparently has a, a burned out bulb, but there is a ballast, some in here, they ba replacement ballast, or uh, you can strip the wires and put in, put in a, LEDs. Uh, put in LEDs. That's what I did in mine. Then you've got like, a like a reading light here. Uh -huh. You got a light the bulbs out and light above the door. 
uh, smoke detector here. Is that uh, battery operated or? That's battery operated. There are some built into the coach. There's one right down here that is a propane and carbon monoxide uh, filter. They say they should be changed every five years. And it hasn't ever been changed. Okay. So it and it worked. Well, you can, for $20, you can buy a... Here are the, the switches for these lights, but they also affect uh, the, steps. the uh, steps. Here are labeled... Oh, that switch the powers the stick. lights, the two big eight-inch lights on each side. Uh, they need to. They aren't working right now. They're hard to keep working. Uh, you put it, replace them with LEDs and new sockets would probably. The steps are switched here. Right now, you know about the problems with the steps. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know about the interior lights. Under here, you've got light. Under here, you've got light. Uh, uh, that has rockers on the end of it. We've switched on the pump. It's here on the end of the panel. Uh, we've got plenty of cold water. Right now we have not filled a hot water tank uh, or allowed it to fill uh, so you have low pressure on that side. You'll hear it come on. This is a filtered water. Ah. You got to use, of course, spray. Here is your lights for the back here. Here is, you'll have to replace this. Oh, well, no, okay. This is your gas hot water switch. It automatically uh, will fire off uh, GFR circuit. Then the electrical, you can flip that all day long. It needs a new element. Your microwave, there's a hanger bar. Yes. It goes right here. It goes out the outside. Uh, the power is up here. And the two screws to hang the microwave are in the top of the microwave. Here is your air filter for your generator. Okay. Here is a engine filter, I think, for the generator. It may be for the, no, that's too small for the engine. It's an oil filter. That's an oil filter. And underneath, okay, this is your knife drawer. I'm sorry, it's up on your toe. This is, well, the, our, sponge our, a sponge drawer. Oh, There's nice. your knife holders. Lit up. You have lights under here. There's some miscellaneous cleaning junk under here. Uh, okay. The control sensor for the slide out, if you've ever given any problem, is all the way at the back of this cabinet. Okay. Uh, the water filter. <clears throat> okay, let me close this up. The water filter is accessed by taking these two drawers out. It's an inline filter. It's right about right about here underneath the cabinets. It's full arm's length back in there. Okay. So I'm not going to do it. I'm having too much shoulder trouble. Sure. Part of your return air is this grill down here. Okay. The furnace is here. Uh. Uh, hadn't been inspected recently, but last time I was using it worked great. Of course, you need to look out for carbon monoxide these with the furnace. have to pick up to come out, so they won't come out while you're moving. So is the only heat LP, or is there electric heat for the, for the house? There is no electric heat. Okay. But your circuits will carry sm will small electric heaters. Okay. The it's a ducted system. You'll see the duct there and in the back and one right here. It'll run you out if you turn it up too high. We'll talk about thermostats in a minute. Three burner stove, manually lit. 
never had any problem. You know, it's the usual to clean it and whatnot. Okay. Uh, this is your fantastic vent. It has a rain sensor. It has a temperature sensor for high and low. The temperature is over here, obvious. Fan speed is here. Uh, switch for in and out and a, and a power switch and a uh, fuse. Sometimes this will stick. It has a manual turn wheel that you push or pull to help get it started. When it's set for a while, the plastics like to fuse together. So the fantastic vent uh, in this kind of weather uh, will sometimes, if you have that front covered to not gain too much heat load, that it'll, it'll control the heat, the temperature in here nicely. Uh, the windows have sliding screens, uh, all the shades, work to some extent. Uh, we've already talked about if, if yeah, you have gaskets. if you have leaks about not only the gaskets taking but the, taking the clamshell apart to work on those. The this area right now these 12 volt lights will not work because of that fuse. The 110 volts all work you have, okay, these switches, part of the, the small panel ones like that are 12 volt system and the big one here uh, is 410 volt. And there's the 12 volt and 110 volt. Uh, then you have reading lights that would also work above where the sofa used to be. Mm -hmm. There are seat belts there for a three person sofa for a three-person seating. At the end was a set of switches for these lights. Okay. So it's just a matter of getting the fuse. Okay, before we leave this area, you know how to use the, the uh, antenna on this? Mm -mm. Okay, this antenna will stick because it's a replacement antenna. It used to have a bar type antenna, but now it's got an amplified antenna. But what you do... This is for the TV? Yeah, this is the TV, is you crank this, you crank this baby up, and you may have to help it, like it, I said. It can yeah, be lubricated not, on it's top. It's not wanting too. to work right now, because it doesn't sit at the right angle, because of the different head. Okay. But uh, once you get it there to adjust your direction... Uh -huh. twist, you pull that down pull and that twist down it. Pull that down and twist. Okay. But it, mine has to be in a certain position to go down, though. There is a slot. A slot. That the bar rests in to keep it. So you might have to get up there and, and adjust it. put you a note beside the front, if you ever use this, uh, that you got to check it. Because we people talking, drive out of campgrounds with the antennas up off. and they rip them off. Now, here is your ice maker, 110 volt. The power is down in the bay beneath. The water connections are beneath. Now, and it's, if you'll swap places, it's just with disconnected. Me. Is if all. You'll swap places with me. <clears throat> Here is your Andy. He's going to need that uh, box. If you don't have it, I may have it. If you're taking Ooh. me down, we'll look. For Which it. box? The amplifier switcher that you put on the. Okay. Here I think your, you have here's it. Here's your cable coming from the outside. This box would allow you to send the signal down line. Okay. There is an auxiliary antenna tap over here and an, a 12 volt cigarette lighter that you don't want to put your finger in right under it. And then there is a distribution uh, connection up here for coax. Okay. Uh, there's nothing on this side, but that's where I always put my uh, uh, router. Okay, uh, what are we missing, folks? Let me just open them to see if there's anything I'm forgetting. What is the, uh, the opening there where the, basically, is that just so the TV can That's slide up the in TV there? the TV will go all the way up. It'll have okay. a 32-inch TV. Excellent. 
it had a little little bitty thing here, mm -hmm. tube type. Now, like I said, it, very important that the seat, sure the seat is not is only up. forward, but that the back of it is over, or if this catches, it'll mess up the mechanism. We've already talked about the uh, problems on the top here. Mm -hmm. I don't know of anything else on this front end to show you. Let's just go on back. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is the bar that has never, they've gotten it closed one time. I've never had it come open, but I, you know, that's sort of a... It's like the bar on the other end. Maybe it'll end. work or maybe it won't. Yeah, uh, you want to get around these this, things. In this door... It likes to fly open when you're going down the road. Yeah, that's something you so need to remember. A, Everything needs to be stowed. Strap there up. is a bolt. There's a floor bolt here. Okay. On that side. So it has to go first. This is removable. And it's all wired, hooked up for a washer and dryer. Stack and it's up. all hooked up for washer and dryer. You're 12, your, your 110 circuit for the outside is a plug-in inside there, and there, uh, there are only two circuit breakers that I'm aware of on those uh, GFR circuits. Let me show you where they are. So the plug-in runs the outlet outside? Runs the outlet, no, on the, on the slide-out. Oh, on the slide-out. Okay, this is broken, but that's easily fixed. Yeah. Uh, that's open. well it it's got to be adjusted a little bit uh, this one's uh, all right I'll mess with it later yeah okay we well, these have controls on the end okay important story sometimes you have flat stuff that's the it's about 14 inches deep but this is real helpful storage down here for heavy stuff, d deep stuff mm -hmm. under the refrigerator. We've already about talked about the refrigerator what is not that? working. What is that? Uh, is that just a drain for the refrigerator there? Or is that where that's the, sink, the, the sink. sink drain? Okay, that's sink where that drain. goes down. Now, the, you know, my personal opinion, I wouldn't spend $1,200 for a replacement three-way refrigerator, I would put a compressor type refrigerator. Yeah, I don't, I think that's... In fact, if you come down, I'll let you have a smaller refrigerator. It's not quite the size, but it's almost the size that you, you have. If you come down, haul it off. Okay. Here is, give me whatever you think on these accessories. Okay, this is just, you know, storage, storage and you're all, in, and the lady's all important full-length mirror. All right, don't know how we're going to do this. Let me get up some light on the subject. You have 12, you have an overhead 12 volt light and you got vanity lights. It's a big bathroom. It is. But it could be made bigger. Take this wall out, which is what I was going to do, and this could be moved over there. And then just unfortunately the there's too much work involved I think to move the toilet yeah uh, in here it does have to help clean the toilet there's a shutoff valve down here and if you want to come in and down there is a shutoff valve for Where? the water come into the toilet if you have any problem oh yeah I see it way down here is a spray wand to help clean the bowl should it get dirty and they do and they do and this lever, you've already, you know, you're familiar with this. Touch. Touch it. Yes. Okay, sometimes this will hang. If it gets real stiff and hangs, if you force it, it, it breaks break. it. You have to take the whole mechanism out and do replacement. The next, the, uh, to stop it, sometimes you have to pull up on it, but also to fill this with water to do your flushing, you can pull up on it. Now, I will tell you, 
that because it moves and because of the age, sometimes you'll get toilet uh, leakage of the water if you put a bunch of water in it at one time. You just have to mop it up. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, vial, the ball in it has some deformation in it, and so it does not seal perfectly. The next time it's serviced, you probably need a new put a new mechanism. This is a uh, this is a uh, China. Oh, that's oh. very unusual. This is a cast iron sink. These are real household faucets. Yeah. Uh, of course, the medicine cabinet. There's you some extra hardware because you cannot buy it anymore for this sliding uh, shower curtain. And this works quite well. It is a little narrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, obviously you know all about that. Here is a regular vent. Here is the switch. Oh, you got Here's the switch for the fan here, but there's also a little switch, the red button there's a switch to raise and lower the vent. In the doghouse, there is the vent. Okay. Uh, this will, if it's left open, you see what's chewed up here? Yeah. That's because this was not strapped and it came partially out and it tore up part of it. It, it was that way when I got it and I wondered how it happened and then one time it happened to us. Yeah. It's like, okay. That's it. That always has to be strapped. That's. Okay, here is one of two uh, GFR circuits. The other one is in the kitchen. Yeah, are they tied together? No, it's separate? two different circuits. So when things don't go wrong and you got the rest of it working, realize this is 12 volt. That's 110. That's 110. Got a 110 problem, that's the first place you check. Right. And it does happen. The other thing to check is to make sure that those toggle switches hadn't gotten out of sequence. That it's actually, the solenoid allows it to come on. Uh, Andy, if you can turn off for a second, we'll go to the back and let you follow us. All right. Well, we do not have a working light directly above this. Let me get all the light I can. All right. Don't ask me why. I don't know. These two control the heat. The best I can tell, this one functions more as a switch than anything else. So just leave it where it's on and you control the heat with this one. This is the one for the air conditioner. And right now it's decided to read in Celsius. You'll have to look up online how to change it. But it's just a simple up or down thermostat. Okay. Touch control. Uh, this, it draws from the house to light it but, and control it, but then the 110 volt, of course, to operate. So this was the switch for the light that no longer works that I didn't. These two patches here were because of a leak behind that exterior light. And I could never fix it from the other side. I had to do this, but you have other leakage problems, so you're probably going to be taking all the paneling out anyway, most or likely. whatever you choose to do, most likely. Mm -hmm. These lights down at the base let me see if I can turn it on. Andy, if you want to film, here's the... The, uh, the upper switch is to turn... Charles? This upper switch turns these speakers off and on. For some reason, that speaker over there is not working. Okay. okay. These lower switches... Okay. Turn on the baseboard lights. I'm trying to turn on the baseboard lights. And if I jiggle the light, sometimes I can get this one to work. Sometimes I can't. They are a pain in the derriere. All right. Uh, probably the courtesy light switch up front. Here is your 
overhead lights for back here. Overhead lights. But if it doesn't control, uh, okay, here is one of your uh, smoke alarms that's part of the original system. It also ha used to have a, a burglar alarm system in it, and the dialer and everything is still up there. Wow. But it is not functioning. You have two-way shades. Uh, shades. On this side, you have privacy. On that side, you've got one side where it's tinted black on the outside, but you don't have privacy. Okay. Uh, these have lights in them. The lights are really nice. These are nice. This one does cabinets. not. They're all nice. Uh, you have your reading lamps. You have your more reading lamps. You have your bordello mirror. Uh, what is above? Is that another uh, smoke alarm? Yes, one of these monoxide. is smoke alarm, and one of these is carbon monoxide. Uh, there's a was a motion sensor on these circuits. Okay, these have lights in them lights too. Lights in them as well. That uh, sticker says exit, so that's an egress window. This is your emergency exit. And how does that work? Okay, I see the red latch. Oh, the red latch is. And it just hinges at the it top hinges and you push it the out. Top and push it out. Yeah. Okay. I haven't tested it, but I don't want to accidentally yeah. <laughs> get it in a position where, when you're about to head down the road. Right. Okay. These cabinets, nothing. They're just storage. Nothing definitive there. But another light. Another Same nice thing light. With this. Uh, however. Up here is your uh, supply for the other TV. Okay. And there's a nasty screw coming through right here that you need to grind off. Mm-hmm. Well, just. All right. Here is the surprise. Under let's the... open the, let's pull this bed up first. How far up does it go? That now it? we can see. That's as far as it goes. And these helpers get, break occasionally. Uh, down here, you see the back side of your electrical. Wow, that's a panel? You got the 12 volt on this side and the regular panel on the other side. I'm going to, and There's you a... see where they come in from the, down yeah. below. Mm -hmm. If you get a musty odor in here, it's because of that crap on the power cord down there. Okay. Uh, if you notice, that smells pretty fresh. Yeah. Great storage. And you can put about 4,000 pounds in here and okay. still stay legal. Uh, I'm going to lower this. And the access to this around here I is on it. the other side. Okay. Uh, I cannot read these things. I have to photograph them. There's a <laughs> trap door on it. I'll just let you see that it's there. I'll let you step over and if Andy wants to make a picture, he can, but yeah, I can see it. to They're work not... them, you have to, I had to always make a picture of them and see which one of the fuses to replace. Well, that's very hard to read. It's impossible to read. TV, video, okay. Detector. Okay. So, all right. The other thing back here, uh, here is here is your two outlets. Uh, well, that's an intake, and this is an exhaust. We found that it did <laughs> not work well blowing in our face. We got out. Deflector. I improvised yeah. that deflector when we were out on a trip in the mountains, <laughs> and I just bent a piece of metal to make it work, you know, and I just hadn't changed Whatever it. Whatever it takes. Okay, there's your second. Behind you is your second thermostat. Oh, okay. And what does that control? That controls this air conditioner. That one's on, on Fahrenheit, so that's good. Uh, yeah. Without shore power, you can't. But it it used to have a heat strip in here. Okay. When the heat strip was working, 
you didn't have to have anything else, but this air conditioner is either the original or the second air conditioner in this coach after over 25 years old. You don't want to put any money in it, I don't think. Yeah. It's old style Freon and everything. But it is, uh, on a moderate day like this, it's warm enough that to dry the coach out, you need it. You'll figure that out or else you'll get it musty. But it's, uh, that one of the air conditioners on this kind of weather will handle the whole coach because the same duct runs between all of them. I didn't show you the return airs. This one's missing. Return airs have the, the filter. filters on them. Okay. They use that little green one inch thick grass cloth stuff. I've tried putting other stuff, but it doesn't seem to have enough power to pull more. Okay. I think that's it on the inside of the coach. Any questions? There's a cushion that goes up in there to insulate it. Oh, for the uh, vent fan in the... In the skylight. Yeah. The in thing the that is not obvious about this screen door mechanism is it has the sensor that controls the steps. The screen door does. Yes. Here is the sense, the magnet. There is the sensor. Okay. So when you get this working, you'll find out it has its own set of peculiarities. I can't remember them all. We've already talked about the... Maybe that's the reason we couldn't get it to run the other day. That one, without disturbing your neighbors, that big one, they'll run you out of the park because you're yeah. going to light up the world. Yeah, does the awning work? The awning works. The awning works manually. That's Unless the way. I'm going to have to close the door here. No, you don't put it out. Yeah, that's one more thing to worry. I'm going to put it out. I'm going to show crossbars that go between these springs. The springs for <laughs> the, the, for the, the lift? For the uh, jacks. jacks. Okay. Here are some springs of the proper size. Here is a, you can check and see if this still works or not. This is one of your charging units. There is an electrical outlet right under here that's on the that's on the G, GFR circuits above. Here is your Ice maker. Ice, ice maker. Here's where the hole comes through for the ice maker to plug in over there. This also has a light that's not working. It's blown out at the present time. Yeah. Well, it needs to be resecured. Okay. You can see where the mechanism for the is for the slide. Now, uh, here's what we need. We'll get to the gas in just a minute. Right here, this latch. latch allows you to control in and out. It needs to be sprayed. sprayed, and sometimes I have to reverse it to get it back up. And sometimes I just bump it and it goes back up. There it is. Now, the other thing is right here these will sometimes work sometimes not those are latches also okay so how do you crank it down okay you don't crank it it is you don't crank it okay well again don't take it down you just release the latches and it falls the strap. when you release all the latches this pulls out Okay. This bar it. broke. That's why it's a different color. It's so long. It has. This is the reinforcement for it. This is where I took the end of my thumb. Ooh. There is a slider inside of here. Uh, it slid. There's a wheel over here to release pressure. There's a mechanism to pull it out. There's another thumb wheel behind here. It supports it in the middle that's all it does down here on the ends both of them are identical uh, this will help lift it this is to lock the mechanism that one needs to be locked we get down there here is the thumb wheel behind here to extend it uh, you will need to have uh, 
restraining ropes in a breeze like we have today that occasionally has gusts or it will pick it up and it'll break that tube in the middle. Yeah, I mean, awnings are notorious <laughs> in any wind uh, at all. Yeah. We never ever use ours for that reason because we never any place long enough. In the mountains, this is fantastic. Yeah. Down here, uh, where you'd really like to use it, mm -hmm. the wind's always too much. So that's how you <clears> do this. It's a manual system. Uh, here is your inlet for your cable. Okay, so if you're connecting to shore cable, on site cable. Now, if somebody will fill it for you, there's your propane tank. Okay. You will... How many gallons does that hold? I think 70. Okay. Here's the regulator that he was talking about, or the two-stage regulator. It's the two-stage, yeah. Now, that's one reason. Here's the fuel inlet. But they handle all of that. Mm -hmm. And here's, that spews out when it gets full. It hadn't been inspected recently. They may not fill it. This is the indicator that never works. Uh, here's the valve to turn it on. I never drive Here with my fuel on. The way you, you, there are different. It has a safety feature on it. You, the magazines say, no, you use it for your furnace while you're driving down the road. Others say, you never turn it on while you're driving. That's up to you. This is auxiliary where you can well, put the big tank on okay. it. Right. Well, we got run into, and what they hit was our propane tank, and yep. it started leaking immediately. The line, it severed severed the line, but the, it was off, fortunately. But it's supposed to have an override, but they don't always work. So we drove with it about half and half. It depends. If it got cold enough, we'd turn that sucker on. <laughs> if we, But that heater would generally run us out. It, yeah. it had to be down close to zero or down to 32 before we. All right. What have we got uh, in here? Here is one of the springs. The make grating that I got cut on a while ago that goes on the generator. face of the generator. This is the door for your water heater. They sell the little clips okay. at the, to fix the bottom. You need to get an RV catalog or one online. Most all of these bays have working lights under here. You definitely want to change these to LED because if you accidentally left one on, it could drain your battery. The house circuit does not adequately charge your battery. You have to have auxiliary sources. Uh, it, it's just a known problem. <laughs> these latches Oh, what's back there? What's all this for? Just storage? Yeah, it's all storage. And and that's your mechanism. Okay, these are no longer made. I fixed one of them. You'll find one, one of these in the back somewhere. It has a Coca-Cola cap. So if I want a new one, I'd have to replace them all. You would have to rebuild it. Yeah. They don't make a they don't make a replacement for you. Got to you've got to rebuild one of these. But it's just a matter of putting the springs in and lubricating it up. Uh, okay, and this is the uh, back of the furnace. Where you can find all of that. Now, we've already talked about the switching on the tag axle. This is the vent for the air conditioning. I mean, from here for the refrigerator. So that's... You're not... You're probably going to replace this and you just have to seal this up. But some of your mechanisms you have to disconnect to do that are here. Right, so it's unplugged. You're at the back of a, you're, yeah, it's unplugged. You're at the back of a three-way refrigerator okay. with a heater and all that other stuff. You can decide for yourself what you want to do. If you do use it, up here was, it's no longer there, a, a fan that senses the heat to draw uh, to create more of a chimney effect. If you do use, it will improve your performance about 10 degrees. Right. Which Two is... of them would even be better because mine's bigger than, than his is. But frankly, if you, you don't have to use the generator going down the road to power a lot of this stuff anyway. 
you might as well have a compressor refrigerator. Yeah. The compressor refrigerators don't burn as much juice as they used to. And in 12 volt molds, this will burn a lot of amps in a hurry. It's a big refrigerator. Okay, yeah. your TV and your power is what it's made. Uh, Wait, there's another TV here? Yep. There's one on the front too. Is this an inlet it's or? It's all powered from up there. Okay, so this is an outlet this for a porch outlet. TV. You might be able to power it down line. I don't know. Okay. All right, uh, Andy's gonna come around on this yeah. side. I'm gonna open this up. And... Come on around, Charles, so you can see without blocking him. Okay. Here is an extra bulb for the room. It's a seal. Here we'll slide your, out. with your light switch and we'll find we got a leak. I got water on my finger. Uh, I will show you the mechanisms in just a second. This is the pump for the tag axle. It blows that up. Okay. That has to be running all the time. We need to pull this out of here where we can get our head in here and see what all is going on. Okay. Uh, I think this was part of the burglar alarm. I know of no other purpose for it. That's a big 12 volt motor. Uh, yeah, it is. Is that condensation now, from the I'm gonna let Andy come on this side and shoot you a picture of all your crossover network and you'll just have to figure it out for yourself. That's oh, your hot motor. water, that's your hot water and cold water coming into this. The bypass valve so that you can drain it and continue to use cold water and also and also to, as far as blowing the whole thing out but right now we've developed a leak on one of these PEX connections there's water over here is there condensation from that compressor maybe is this well it's just something to check because these all checked as far as the go no go yeah. as being correct but there's your crossover that's the intended use of it is to be able to blow the lines or to to not use the hot water heater and continue to use the cold water okay so it's got the valves on it i replaced uh this is polybutyl i've never had a problem with polybutyl but i had to get pecs, pecs to continue and there are fittings that go between the two. Okay. Uh, here I am about to close up. Should we put this back in there or no? Oh, yeah, we better put that back. You'll want that. You may want that. It's not as big as the one that's on it, but it depends on how well you can adjust the slide room as to whether you can use that. Uh, this is your furnace. This is the only rust I know of. It's on. the hot water heater. I mean, this is the water heater, rather. Okay. Uh, these boards are notorious for going bad, not allowing you to control it. This is the burner orifice. This is your your drain. When you want to periodic, yeah, you want to periodically clean this. Uh, actually, no, that is not the element. The element is underneath on the end of the tank, and it's an either held on with screws and the thermostat is in it for the electrical usage on it. Just hmm. everybody, it's an aluminum tank, it's going to last forever because it didn't have the dielectric problem. But every mechanic I've ever had work on it says we won't touch that unless we unplug the house, complete, unplug the camper and turn the generator off because you're dealing with a, uh, a live circuit. So where is the heating element? It's on the end of the tank underneath the coach. So back? Yeah, it's up under way. here. Yeah. Okay, that's not at all like mine. No. And, and how many gallons is the water tank? I think it's only a six. Now, frankly, if I was having to replace so this, ten. it's 10. If I was having to replace this, I would put in a demand system. But if you put a demand system on both hot and cold, you'll never keep up. If you put the hot, put it on hot only, you probably could keep up. 
Yeah. Which means it's never going to be quite as hot as you'd like for it to be. Yeah. The generator we've talked some about, about where to check the oil. We're trying to get these linkages freed up. Um, the speed of the generator determines the output. Here is the oil filter. You just got to get these bins out of it and get this thing open where you can work on it. Mm -hmm. Serious work on it of replacing anything beyond these immediately accessible items uh, like the air filter or the fuel filter means you have to figure out how to drop this cradle. They say you have to take the, the first thing you have to do is take the exhaust off. And right. then there's bolts under there where this, this thing is on a swing and then you slide the baby out. Mm. Uh, this started leaking. <laughs> this is sort of messed up now, but it solved the problem when I put a grip edge on it. See, the grip edge is no longer made. This is a custom piece of plastic. And if you don't have it, it will flow into the bay. And then this, these cover strips you can buy if you want to paint them and all that. Okay, I don't have the keys. I don't know of anything in there. Okay. That's just, just storage. Nothing okay, else. is there air in the spare tire? Can Probably we pull it out not. and have a look? Let's pull it and see. Let's go to the whole sequence. Okay. Uh, I'm not strong enough to do that. Somebody push in on the bumper. You heard it pop, it came yeah. loose. Now, let's pull the bumper out. That's a not much of a spare tire. That's as far as it comes out with that trailer hitch there. Well, no, here's the problem. Yeah, the ball on the trailer hitch. But that's also hidden. No, it's not. It's it's got just enough clearance. That's right. It's but you'll have to take you are gonna have out. to you're gonna have to free that that thing up. Was it sleeved? Trailer hitch? I'm sure it is. It's probably a slide in trailer hitch ball, isn't it? Well, it, it's got a it right big on. nut oh, on the bottom. It's got a big nut on it. Yeah, but this, this is not a sleeve that goes nope. into that nope. receptacle? Nope. Yeah, it is. That's tied to the frame. Yeah, but there's a, this is a sleeve that goes into yeah. the hitch. Oh, there is a sleeve. Yeah, it is a hitch receiver. Okay. But it may be rusted. Yeah. There, all that's that rusted. That's, that's turned loose. All that functions as is when you step on the bumper to keep it from okay. coming down. This was miscellaneous storage. The road tools. Uh, I think that's where the jack for, for the lug wrench was. This it, is the easiest way to get to that to repair it if, it, if it's not working. That's the uh, electrical. That is your... Uh, yeah, and it has a spare wire as well, but that is for your for your trailer you know, for your trailer. your electric brakes on your trailer. We didn't talk about up on the front, but the wiring for that is included in this harness. Look at the size of that supply wire. Yeah, so that's some serious. Let's see if we can go back in. Uh -oh. Well, let me pull it out. All right. This with the blue stripe is potable water hose. Okay. There's your extra fan. This is an overflow vent. Uh, There's the drain. This is the drain. There's Light. nothing else to it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, your tire iron is in here. Okay. But I keep the potable stuff in here and the polluted stuff in the other bag. Now, what's back here? Oh, that's your electrical. That's your electrical circuit. And, okay. This was for telephone. And this was for cable. And I never got the cable one to work. Uh, I don't know why it has to plug into a socket. Because it's hardwired upstairs. But it does. It's, this is the crossover network. It's supposed to be automatic. 
but sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. You're gonna have to read online because I cannot remember what all to do other than pushing those buttons up front. It's supposed to be all Okay, so this is a solenoid that switches between... Um, solenoids up front, yeah. And to keep bugs and rodents out. You just run it down through there. Yeah, this has a lock on it. This is for connecting to shore power. This is shore power, 50 amp. You have somewhere in here, we put you a uh, crossover for a 30 and a 30 and a 20 cheater box. It's up inside. Right. Okay. We also there is a a 30 amp adapter in here somewhere. Yep. Yep. There's a 30 amp adapter or a 110 adapter. Okay. Uh, only one air conditioner will run at a time. It's automatic. That's when you don't have full service. It's there's your spec. Okay. Okay. Now the nitty gritty. All right. There's your extra hoses. Man, I got a ton of them. The what now? Extra. All sorts of extra hoses and your lights back here on this one. This is your drain line. Wait, it's drain got a cap on this it. This is a dump the black this water. Is, yeah. Oh, both. Okay, black, black, black and gray. Okay. In here, that pull, that knife switch that comes in and out, that's your gray. Which, See the handle? Yep. Here, with the extension on it, is your valve for your black. Okay, so black is on the left and gray is on the right. Well, black is connected to the four inch pipe, so it's obviously that's connected to but, a smaller pipe. Yeah, but is the is the gray water not connected to the big pipe? Yes, but it transitions at that junk at that switch. It changes sizes. And those are replaceable and you can get motorized ones even. Yeah. Now, here is to flush your tank. You turn this valve, this is a connector, and we use this white... Well, to flush which tank? This, the black tank? The black tank. Now this needs to be labeled with black on both ends for safety's sake. So you don't accidentally use it. In case your water starts tasting a little bitter. All right, so that's what you use to flush the black tank, because black tanks have to be flushed if they have a lot of solid material and in them. This is your fill mechanism. So where does the the water goes in here on the left, where the air nozzle thing is? Well, the two nozzles, this is how I got the, I forgot how I did it even now. This is how I got the, uh, uh, the one time I did put, uh, antifreeze in it. This is how I got it in there. Okay. But normally the, the cold water connection is there next to the red button. Yeah. Here is your pump for your pressure. Here is a switch on it. Your filter that I was talking about upstairs behind the cabinet. This one won't work. It's the wrong connection on each end, but that's the type of filter it is. You'd have to pull it out and see what adapters you needed to make it work. Oh, but you could use that, but you use that on the filter, the water going in to the could camper. You, no, this one is useless it's except to put it on the hose outside. Yeah, on the hose. That's what I'm saying. That's what I use is one yeah, on the hose. It'd be better to replace the one on the inside because it's right in front of your uh, drinking water fountain. All right, so do here's your pump. For, for your air pressure. Here's a valve on it. If it doesn't want work, if that accidentally kind of off, that'd turn it off. off. Uh, of course, your fuel tank filler cap is here. Question. All right. All right. So this is to let clean water in? That one, the white one, is for clean water in. Right now, we put or a put air blow too. plug in it for, for to, blowing it to out. blow the lines So out. that wouldn't get lost. Right. That's the only reason it's there. Okay. What's that? I forgot what the switch is. Fresh water, maximum pressure. I don't remember what it is. I think it's a switch for the pump. 
So to dump. I leave it on all together. Okay. To, to dump. dump. What went through the procedure? Close the freshwater valve. Right here? Yeah. When you're Put in the park, in. that one stays open. If you're hooked up, that one stays open all the time. So it dumps into... So it's just constantly cleaning that line out. All right, so to dump, I push dump. that closed, Put push that it in. Put that one closed, open this one. Open that one, the pull handle. Uh, right when you get towards the bottom, run some extra water through it. Two or three bowls full. Then when you finish and you've disconnected your hoses, you push this one back in and open that one back up. I leave that one open all the time. And what about hooking up here? What if I do anything with this? Uh, this is, you'd have this closed and this is creates a siphon action in the bunch in the bottom of the tank. I did have, because it didn't always work so great, I don't know what happened to it. I made a, I made up a wand. They make a wand you just stick down in the toilet. That you could stick down in the And clean it up. Yeah. So this is just and to it's got the, the adapter tank out. Or right. to yeah. dump it. Right. It's, instead of an aerator, it's got one of those adapters already on the faucet in the bathroom. Okay, now do we need to close this or leave this open? Whoops. Need to leave that open that's, in order to. That's water. That's the either the, that's the that's to fill it. I'm sorry. That's why we're not having as much pressure. Now remember this. If I close this, check and see if we don't have more water pressure now. Okay. Okay. Uh, we can check that and we'll go back in. But okay, that was right there. Yeah. And that cuts off the flow. Yeah. This that's the way you fill that tank is by turning that on. The potable water tank. The potable water that controls in and out sprocket is runs across right here. The rod that controls the in and out sprocket? Yep. For the slide. For the slide is here. The I have moved it with a pipe this? wrench before. That the fuse is too that needs to replace? No, it's up under. The fuse that needs to be replaced is under the rig in line with the step, approximately in line with the steps but the up above shaft. the drive shaft. Okay. <laughs> Unholy words. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> I hate being under there. Uh, here's you some extra fluids. We've already talked about that. You need to put uh, dot four on your checklist to get before you head out. Here is the connector that you take apart where you can run the back and the front separate. It's some sort of a slip joint. Oh, you mean the mechanical connector? The mechanical connector on that rod. If you have to crank the cogs on the end, if it gets out of alignment, if one end jumps You've a cog. You've never been able to get it perfect. <clears throat> you do it, you move it one time, the carpet has enough nap to it, it and you end up the same wage every time. We'll have that end in perfect, and then it'll mess up. Okay, on this end, here is where, where the motor. we didn't have a battery, we jumpered, the, there's your motor for the slide. the slide. That's where we got to it. And it's disconnected right now. It is? Isn't it? Nope, it's reconnected. Okay. There again is a light. It looks like the switch is a little hanging out, but... All right, we, you already checked the dock lights. Um, Was there anything under the hood we needed to look at? We've gone through the various en engine connections. Here is another fuse box. We found one inside, here is another one. Right. Here there is, is brake fluid on this, yeah, Charles. That, that seal's leaking. Yeah. It broke. Here oh, is it. the other, here is the other uh, this is where your solenoid is it's for the crossover network. That's what all that mechanism is about. And there's some fuses down in there that I've never touched. I don't know what exactly they control. Okay, don't we forget. We talked about your heat. Uh, right now, it's where it, the heat won't come on. If you release that, it's going to let the water through and you're going to get hot. Yeah. We'll just what leave it. Motor is that? The 460 V8. That's no longer, all that's no longer available. Okay, don't forget to check your wipers. Yeah, they need to be replaced. 
Yeah, so when you go to the auto store, see if you can get a seal for that. You might try Teflon. Your horn is down here behind the light. I see it. And I don't know what that pod is there of electrical components. Some sort of rectifier. Yeah. And how does the hood latch work? You were going to show us where. Well, you were going to show us where it goes. Right here. And the bracket go, that's under the seat, the bracket goes on the back here. That side never worked. One's adequate. It just rusted off. It went under. Two See? holes right there. Yeah, yeah, that's where it went. Now, the other thing under here, I'm thinking, oh, this is your pump, your hydraulic pump for your jacks. And where is electrical it? Electrical connections, that motor going that way. And I don't know where, up on top of it, is where you check the hydraulic fluid. There's a silver cap on top of it. Okay. Just like the brake It's not real cap. obvious. Yeah. It looks like that one except larger. Uh-huh. Now the lever for that is inside. And you do have to give it a little goose to make it work. Oh. I wouldn't trust this, but there's a grab handle. And a step. And a step. The step I would trust. How neat. A step. I trust that. I don't trust that. Yeah. Pull, pull. Yep. Pull a hole in the fiberglass. Some, some tells me that would have pulled out on this trip. If, if you, you tried to say that. If I, man, I tried to do it. <laughs> well, there are all kinds of neat things they've built into it. I'm just amazed. Uh, let's measure the wipers so we can get the right kind. Well, let's measure the wipers. Let's measure, measure the, the height, height of the rig. Okay. 